Welcome back, none of our top ten show fans. Scott Icebox, Nimi with you. Damon, Big DZ Gumbert, hey. over the airwaves, as usual. And Royce Brackett, who may or may not have pulled out a victory. If you don't know, the Film Eat Film Tournament is going on right now. Head over to our YouTube page, The Real Frame of Mind, R-E-E-L, and check out if he won his um, most recent match, it was round one, match two. I think uh, I think it's worth the uh, I think it's worth the click. It's very exciting. Mm-hmm. So, if you haven't seen that, check that out. Uh, but here we're celebrating the love and hate that Suicide Squad is getting right now. Media buzz um, with not our top ten shows, top ten Will Smith movies. Woo! We have two people. I have two people sitting across from me right now. One absolutely adored Suicide Squad. One shat on it. Yep. <laughs> let's take the uh, let's take the negative first. Was it really that bad? I thought it was really that bad. I don't know. I can see how people like it because, as as Taylor Wheeler told me, if you just turn your brain off, it's a really enjoyable movie. But I don't do that. Like I need a I need something to keep me engaged, other than you know, bright lights and stupid jokes. Royce. But in all fairness, I mean, that's what The Avengers was, and you, everyone creamed their pants over right. that freaking movie. I don't know. I, I liked it a lot because it was it was pretty familiar. Like, I didn't know many of the villains in there other than, like, Harley Quinn and maybe Deadshot a little bit. But, um, so that was all pretty interesting and new, and, um, I don't know, like, all the action was pretty great in it. I enjoyed, yeah, I just enjoyed everything about it immensely. I enjoyed it. It might be one of my favorite superhero movies now, honestly. Even the light beam shooting up in the sky yeah i mean like how many other movies have that mcguffin you know thing like we don't really need to know like why the hell is doing that like i mean other movies do that too and it's just fine i don't i don't know what was the worst part about it um well there was there's a lot there wasn't there didn't seem to really be a plot it was kind of just people walking to places and that was like the entire movie, and the villain was really only a villain for about ten minutes at the end, and then the movie was over. All right. Uh, they did have some really weird cuts with it as well, like um, sort of explaining you know how she took over the city and all that crap. Like I, I didn't realize it was trying to be this giant twist at the end, so I kind of thought like everything had been explained out from the beginning, and then it wasn't, and that was just kind of weird. Like, I, I didn't know there was a mystery until they revealed the, the answer to it, which was weird. But yeah. yeah. I, I think a lot of that could be, yeah. a lot of it could be fixed, or could have been fixed in editing. Um, but I did enjoy, I'm probably, I know for fucking sure you didn't, I did enjoy Jared Leto's Joker quite a bit. I thought he was really good at it. Wow, I hated it. I hated it so much. How come? I just thought. The steampunk he, version of Yeah, Joker. it was, it was weird. I, it felt like he was trying to be. Heath Ledger, and when you're trying to be someone else, you just you're just not doing the role the way it should be played, and I don't. It just there was a lot going on that it was just it was too much for me. I feel like if they had just toned it down, there's a lot of parts in there where it was going through backstory for Harley Quinn that I felt like wasn't really backstory for Harley Quinn as much as it was showcasing showcasing the Joker mm-hmm. and. Felt like that didn't... Oh, shit. <laughs> um, it didn't really need to be in the movie at all. And made me kind of dislike his Joker. Last question. Are the critics out to get DC films? Are they, ju- are they just too in love with Marvel that they just can't see past Marvel films and everything else is just garbage? I don't know. I, I don't know what they see in Marvel films, to be honest. Other than, like... Um... Captain America. I think those are really good films, but, like, I know, like, a lot of the Iron Mans get a lot of, um, you know, they, they've been rated well by critics, um, and a lot of the other Marvel movies have done so as well, except maybe, like, Thor, and, like, all the Avengers are rated really well. I, I don't know, um, I don't even know, what was, like, the last DC movie that was... Rated highly? Rated highly by <laughs> critics. Um, the Dark Knight Rises. Probably like just before. The, the trilogy of the the um, 
Dark Knight trilogy was rated really highly. So and like before think, their their attempt at a universe, because I yeah, think like because uh, Man of Steel was like a fifty something percent on Rotten yeah. Tomatoes, and for it's been lower worth. lower than that for the for the other two. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So I don't know. I, I I'm I just hope some I just hope people are starting to see my view <laughs> on these this fucking superhero charade. But with that said, we're here to talk about Will Smith. Getting jiggy with it. The man, the myth, mm-hmm. the legend. It's been a little while since we've done this, but we're going to go back to our original way. We each created a top ten list of the top ten Will Smith films, um, not just his acting in the films, so top ten Will Smith films. Um, we came back here, we're going to highlight our top five, uh, five through one. If we have a similarity amongst our lists within the top five, whoever has that rated lower, that film rated lower, meaning towards five will re- they will replace that movie with their number six their six is gone seven and so on and so forth so who's it gonna be who's gonna start this off dibs last i'll go first if you don't want if you don't mind Bruce. Go right ahead. all right well i'm gonna start everybody with uh a little bit of a i guess a curveball if you will okay my number five will smith film wild wild west whoa Oof. Higher? No, God. <laughs> uh, no. I'm okay, look here. And I'm going to say this specifically for Damon, because Royce, I don't know where you stand in, in well, in, in the way I'm going to, to word this. Um, there's a film out there that I know we both love that does not fit um, sort of in its realm of what it's supposed to be. In this case, it's a wild, a wild western, a western movie, right? Mm-hmm. Um but I'm going to say that this this film sort of is reminiscent to me as uh, from um, Lethal Weapon 4. Interesting. And okay. the reason is this. If you take Lethal Weapon 4, which is um, supremely shit on by critics, it is the outcast of the Lethal Weapon uh, franchise, but how can you have so much fun with Lethal Weapon 4? Is just looking at it as more of a comedy than oh, yeah. an actual flat out action movie yeah. because if you enjoy it as a comedy it is freaking hilarious it's enjoyable it's over the top and i feel like wild wild west is tr- it was people try to take it too seriously and if i had to, to guess why it was crapped on so much is because like we just did or like i just did with um the hot ticket item right now which is superhero movies and superhero um, realms and all that and characters um we're always looking, the negative Nancys are always looking to sort of cut down, you know, the the powers that be at the time. So at the time of the 90s, it's this film was in 1999, I believe. So Will Smith is a powerhouse in movies. Um, he's the name to get. He can do he can do comedy. He can do dramatic, whatever. Um, he can sing. So I think in the time of that, you see this Wild Wild West movie, and you're just thinking, "Well, this is just garbage." Because I don't want to, I don't want to support Will Smith. I don't think he's good. So why don't we just cut down the movie? If you think about it, what's different in this role than Men in Black, Men in Black Two, Bad Boys? Like, but those are so highly regarded as classics of his, or you know, classics of Michael Bay, or you know, so on and so forth. So. My question to you listeners is, why would Wild Wild West be taken so seriously when it is so ridiculous in thought? I mean, and then to me, I, I've sort of looked around, um, I stepped outside the box and sort of looked around and just thought, um, it works for me as an homage or uh, a satire to old Western TV shows. Bonanza, Gunsmoke, um... The Rifleman, all these movies, and I'm sure I'm missing a bunch, uh, all these TV shows that are just so ridiculous with their, you know, the huge climaxes and the resolutions where everybody learns something and everything's hunky-dory until next episode where something else goes wrong. Um, but I think it's uh, it's a cool, charismatic Will Smith in this role, and it's got this sort of turn-of-the-century technology going with it post, uh, post-Civil War, um, Confederate holdouts. Christ, we've seen this movie. We've seen this plot so many times, oh, for sure. which I mm-hmm. think is still it's funny if you think about it in the in the way that this movie takes it as you know 
all these Confederates are just African American hating, let's lynch everybody and take over the world kind of people. Kind of like how the Nazis are, are you know what I mean? Like yeah. how the basically that's the the evil of the Nazis, right? But um, I think it's funny. The dialogue is memorable. Um, it's it's a '90s staple. I remember getting the the toys from Burger King or wherever it was. And um, I know the story isn't the best. You know, it gets it gets really stupid. Yeah. Um, but you know, it has some tender moments. Uh, it's hilarious at moments. Barry Zonenfeld is not the greatest director. He doesn't have the best uh, best works to his name, but um, I'm sure because he's worked so much with Will Smith, we'll probably see him again on this list. And, yeah, I think it's a lot of hate for this film, but as I said, it works for me as a satire spoof of, you know, a television genre um, that is sort of long since dead, but... Mm. Although, I mean, I could be giving it a little bit too much credit, but <laughs> I don't know how you guys feel about Wild Wild West. I love it. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but I, I liked it as a as a child, so I mean... I, I never... I, I know, I think, thinking back to like when it was first promoted, that it was promoted as like this big, huge, giant action film type thing, and no one was seeing it for being just completely ridiculous, which which is what it was. You right. Know, they have the spider the, the spider at the end. And the yeah, yeah. Like, that that whole thing is, like, you know, I can understand being in theaters and being uh, feeling that um, you were promised one thing and given another, and that might be why it was... Well, I mean, we've... I mean, we could actually kind of tie that into what we were um, perceived to have, uh, or perceived, um, perceived to get with uh, the trailer to... Suicide Squad, where yeah. people thought it was one thing, and then they go into it, and it's another. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know, man. I think Wild Wild West is just... It's one of those films that people get really snobby about, I guess. But not not in, like, the the height of other movies that you'd hear. I'm, and I'm blanking right now of what could fall under that, um, that, uh, that list. But I think that Wild Wild West is just... I mean, I don't think you have to turn your brain off to enjoy it, but yeah. mm-hmm. I honestly think you can have a good time with it if you just if you don't take it super seriously. And then you, there, trust me, there are serious flaws with it, but there there are moments where Will Smith makes me freaking laugh, and I don't I don't know why it's like him and Chris Tucker like they just know my they know my spots, <laughs> <laughs> they get me every time. But Will Smith's a great comedic actor. He he, he is. More. And that, I mean, I just think, like, going back to that scene in the beginning where the, he's, like, naked with that black chick, that fine black tower. chick uh, in that water tower, and, like, he's faking, making out with her yeah. while he's peeking through that hall and yeah. all that crap that happens, but it's funny. And then just the way that he deals with that uh, Arliss Loveless, uh, I think is like, Branna. Branagh, do you know the Keith Branagh or whatever? He's the bad guy. Yeah, right? yeah. And just the back and forth that they have, you know, like, I haven't seen you in a coon's age, you know? <laughs> and then he's, he's all, uh, Will Smith's always talking about, like, how he has no legs and everything. Right. Um, it's just, it's great. It's funny. And I think uh, Kevin Klein does a, uh, a pretty good job in it um, to be sort of that, you know, that goon. But yeah, it, it, it's really far fetched. It doesn't capture the time period very well. And it, it gets really, really stupid at the end. But, I, like I said, it's it, kind of a spoof movie. Sure, I, I'll take it. Finally, moving on from Wild Wild West. <laughs> My number four. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say. We do five, four each, and then three, two, and then we'll go around for the ones. So, four, for me, maybe another curveball. Men in Black 3. Ooh, I did not have that on my list. I don't have it that high, so. Okay. Um, well, Men in Black 3, I, this one's not as... Maybe I should have switched Wild Wild West with Men in Black 3. I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it's a fresh new look on time travel um, because I, I feel like it's just so simplified that the, the villain has one simple goal, and that's to go back in time and kill one singular person. I don't watch many time travel movies, so I, I don't know if that... I mean, I it's, do. It seems like it could be... Uh, uh, a, a reoccurring plot. Yeah, it's a, mm-hmm. it's a pretty basic plot for, for um, time travel. Thank you, Terminator. But yeah. the way... <laughs> yeah, I guess so, yeah. But the way they do it, I think, um, really brings back uh, great characters. 
and sort of harnesses the the joy and love that we have for the first one. Uh, I think it does a great job to sort of bring us back because two was awful <laughs> garbage. Um, I don't even remember what happens, and I just know that K is like a mailman or something. Yeah, it's so bad. Um, but I think it, uh, like I said, I think it ties into the original. <laughs> I think it has a great twist ending, and one that's a little bit more heartfelt. Like I said in Wild Wild West, where Will Smith does um, come off, at, he, he plays the heartfelt moments in these films pretty well, and I think that he does that with the great twist ending when he finds out what happened to his dad. Um, that his dad is not some scrub who dipped on him, him and his yeah. mom, but that he was a hero of sorts. Uh, but yeah, and then the use of Josh Brolin. Perfect casting. Yeah, I, 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 like that is just amazing casting. I couldn't but I, believe it. Like how it was just unreal. Mm-hmm. But I love Josh Brolin anyway. Since I yeah. saw him in the Goonies, man, that guy has been just. A, he should be on the underrated list, uh, actors list. Shit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what a great, what a great actor. What a great, um, what a great role. And then the interesting villain. But villain. Uh, but I, I just thought you know, it really, really tied. Tied into the first movie. And I think that's why I enjoy it so much. But that's my 5-4. Royce, awesome. take her away. All right. Hey, buddy. Well, working with this and looking at the films, like I realized just how few Will Smith films I've seen and just how very similar they are. Um, and Like, you know, the comedic action movies. But my number five, uh, let's see. I had, um, yeah, Hancock. Mm. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, higher? higher? No, I have it one spot lower. Oh. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, when I first saw this movie, I, I didn't really enjoy it that much, and I've kind of gone back through it throughout the years. It had, like, an interesting plot, so um, this might be more obscure because I don't think it did extremely well. Be no, this movie gets shit on way too much, in my opinion. I, I didn't think it was, I mean, I didn't like it at first, like I said, but I thought, I think it got better as I thought about it more, but... Um, Will Smith essentially plays a superhero that's, uh, like, a he's an alcoholic. Yeah. I don't know if he does drugs or anything else like alcoholic. that. But, um, he essentially has all the powers of Superman. He can fly, super strength, super speed, all that stuff. But he doesn't really, isn't really a superhero. He's more of a nuisance to the city. And, um, turns out he has a connection with someone else in the city. And that's sort of the plot of it, that they both have these superpowers. Um, but yeah, it, it was interesting in that, like... <sighs> Like the, it, it's almost a love story, and it's not at the same time because spoiler alert: like Will Smith doesn't end up with the girl at the very end. The the girl, the other one that has the superpowers, stays with her man, and has this very interesting scene where he's like, I think he's like in the hospital or something, and it turns out that whenever they get close to each other, their powers weaken. That's why they always they always end up finding each other again, but then separating. And um, I don't know. It was just a really interesting movie and. Uh, uh, interesting take I guess on superheroes you know what would what would Superman be like if he was just this uh, schmuck that was an alcoholic yeah and, he wasn't the perfect person that he portrayed yeah. himself to be you know he had perfect powers but not like a, a beacon of mor- yeah. morality so I think it, this wasn't one of his more funnier roles I don't think as I recall um, more actiony a little more dramatic and heartfelt but I think it's definitely worth a watch um, just to see this sort of interesting story and interesting um, place that Will Smith was at with his acting. Yes. I mean, and, and there is some comedy because it is, it is Will Smith and then the the other man is Jason Bateman. So they play off each other pretty perfectly. And then Charlize Theron is the, the, the wife slash ex-girlfriend, ex-wife, I don't know, Will mm-hmm. Smith, whatever. And I, I yeah, it, it was a very interesting take on, on a character like that. Um, with him being so incredibly flawed, but also being like supposed to like be saving people's lives, and in a lot of cases he almost like hurts people more than he helps. Mm-hmm. It's just like I don't know. He has a bit jail at one point, doesn't he? Yeah, so not, maybe not prison, but jail. Obviously. I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's an interesting look, and I think a lot of people. I mean, I haven't seen it in a long time. I think uh, our film film host Ben Siski found it found Hancock in a cart one time and got it for himself for free. Mm-hmm. And he lent it to me. And I haven't seen it probably since it came out on DVD yeah. back in the day. But I can just tell you that I really enjoyed the... F- 
what you had said, Royce, earlier was about um, how their powers weaken when they get closer. Mm -hmm. And then I've always thought, like, you know, what would I choose? Would I choose to be with this person or would I choose the powers? Mm -hmm. You know, it's always it's always such a tough decision. It's like two people are hanging off a cliff. Who do you save? Kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. kind of hypothetical question. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that aspect of the movie. And I also think that Peter Berg is um, is an underrated director. I really enjoyed Flat Friday Night Lights. And um, he did uh, another movie um, and I'm blanking on right now. Oh, he did Lone Survivor. Lone Survivor he did recently. He's got the uh, the oil movie coming out soon, too. Oh, the oil rig one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, I think I think he's underrated. I think um, his work is good. Oh, The Kingdom he did as well mm -hmm. okay. uh, in 2007. So, and The Rundown. Um, so, I think, I, I mean, not saying I like all those works, but, you know, I think he's an underrated director, and I think that this movie is... I, I think it's kind of before its time. Can you imagine oh, if it came yes. down, if it came out now? Mm -hmm. um, it would it would do spectacularly. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so, and I think it would be reviewed differently as well. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Um, so kudos to them. Yeah. What's your three or four? Four. Sorry. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, I had Hitch. Ah, Ali would ha Ali would be happy with you. So I talked about this before on a different podcast. I forget which one. Um, romantic, romantic comedies, comedies yeah. yeah. Check it out, romantic comedies. Yeah. Um, but Hitch is it, it's I would say like ninety percent stock romance, romantic comedy. You know, regular this, a lot of goofy stuff happening. Um, dates going bad. There's some obviously homosexual jokes thrown in there throughout the thing with. Will Smith and uh, was it Kevin James? Kevin James. Yeah. Kevin James. We, we, we said Kevin Smith in the other <laughs> podcast. Um, He's not that good. But well, no. what I do <laughs> like about it, um, it is a bit different in that, like, the, you know, Hitch was, he, it has a little more thought to it. Like, Hitch was meant to be this, you know, ladies' man, and when he finds a woman of his dreams, he can't help himself. He screws up every date, every situation, um, and they still end up falling in love with each other. And even at the end, you know, a lot of romantic comedies have the big speeches at the end that, you know, sways their love interest to them. God, um, yes. Yeah. Crazy Stupid Love. Worst one <laughs> ever. And it was so the one with the so... signs? Like, he's got the signs in the window, or is that a different one? No, no. Uh, Crazy Stupid Love, I think, that's the one with, um... Uh, Ryan Gosling, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, um, I'm, I don't know why I'm being so stupid right now, but uh, um, the guy from The Office, the main guy, isn't Steve it? Carell. Steve Carell. Yeah. I knew his name was Steve. Uh, Steve Carell gives like this speech in front of like this third grade class. It's so stupid, and it takes me so out of the movie, and I was like, I was loving it up until then, <laughs> and I was like, Never gonna watch it again. But, <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. No, no, that was good. But uh, you know, Will Smith's speech at the end is very mumbled and fumbled, and it's not like it's mm -hmm. not anything special or, or uh, I guess it's special in that you know it's different from every other romantic comedy. But it seemed to be more aware of what it was than other romantic comedies. It's almost a um, a parody of what they were. Right. How yeah. much meta knowledge they had about yeah. their own genre, and I mean it's just a lot of fun. A lot of fun jokes. Um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It works. I, I've seen it with people um, who are really into just watching films for entertainment. Obviously, there's mm -hmm. millions upon millions of people that look for, sure. for that. Mm -hmm. And it hits home, man. The comedy hits. Uh, Kevin James, Will Smith, they hit. And everything that happens when he like he blows up, his yeah. face blows up and kicks her off the jet ski yeah. and stuff. But like... I'm not going to lie. I mean, I could sit there and watch it. I wouldn't want to watch it a hundred times in a row. No. Like I did dodgeball. <laughs> uh, but I wouldn't watch it a hundred times in a row. But I, I think that uh, that it you can watch you can watch it every now and then and not be bored with it. You can have no. fun with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, what do you think about Hitch, Damon? I like it. Um, I don't like Kevin James in general. So that hurts me for the movie a little bit. I just... I hate him as an actor, um, and I think the, like the, oh fuck, with fables. What's the the word I'm thinking of? The fables have a moral, moral to the story. Moral. Boom, got it myself. Didn't even need you. Um, the moral of the story is kind of basic, and it's pretty much just like, just be yourself, 
and you'll get the girl of your dreams, basically. And it was just... Which is I not like true, that, but... Yeah, no, it's, it's completely <laughs> bullshit. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Like, <laughs> Not saying that's the approach I, I took. Yeah. I just want to make that clear for the <laughs> yeah, record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was just... It, it felt a little basic. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, the comedy's pretty good. The, the parts without Kevin James. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was it was a cool story. Uh, it was unfortunate that the guy from Burn Notice was such a di- our dick. Yeah. Movie, but whatever. He's a giant dude. Like, he was, I guess, the closest thing to a villain. Or, yeah. He didn't really have a villain. Take the take whole movie yeah. was just kind of... I, I really like that guy. Yeah. He's I, in some other movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just and randomly. Bits and Pete, like, yeah. for yeah. five minutes. Um, and and he, like, what, seven seasons on Burn Notice and yeah. didn't get a yeah. single movie off or after And, that. I mean, <laughs> Burn Notice, you can just pick up anywhere in the season and just... Watch an episode. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, like numerous like times. Ninety percent of the season is is, yeah. is filler episodes. I like Omar. I don't know what his name is for life of me, but I enjoyed him quite a bit. Jeffrey Donovan. Well, oh, you guys up. keep talking. I'll look it up. Okay. Uh, that was your three, though. Sure. Yeah, that was yeah, my three. All right. That was four. 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 God, I'm so you're, you're, oh, you're a little ahead yeah. of yourself. But I know, fine. dude. All right, I'm so excited. I'll, I'll go. All right, I'm it's your turn. We're, we're done talking about it. Yep. <laughs> so your number five. Hey, we spent twenty minutes on Wild Wild West. We talked um, my number five is I Am Legend. Ah, uh, higher. Okay. My number six was Hancock, so I guess I'll skip down to my seven. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, Robot. Uh, oh, my no. lord. You're good. You should be oh. good. Yeah, okay, okay, good, good. I'm glad, because oh. I Thank God. I was going to switch, but... Mm-hmm. That Damn. was the one I did the, the coin flip, because I was flipping to see if I wanted to do I, okay. Robot or yeah. I Am Legend. Uh, and you were right. Um, Jeffrey Donovan. Donovan. Yep. Good call knowledge that I have in my brain. Um, I am robot. Okay. I'm, ro- I'm, I'm, I'm robot. I'm robot. Sorry. I'm <laughs> fucking everything up now. Well, I just said I'm, I'm gonna robot. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna like get the plots mixed up now. So uh, I'm robot. That's the one with the vampires, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, I think what stood out to me about I, robot was and the, the movies with, with artificial intelligence. I mean that. I, robot. Ex Machina. Um, even, AI? Even, a, I haven't seen AI. Okay. AI, really, though. Yeah. Um, even a little bit with 2001 with uh, with HAL 9000. Like, yep. you, you get these really interesting, like, what ifs. Her, even. Yeah. I mean, kind of. To, to an extent, yeah. Um, like, what if, you know, robot, we had robots and, like, we had all these rules, but what if one day one of them almost evolved? And started breaking those rules kind of thing. And that's what iRobot basically centers around is these people are like, there's no way this robot could have done it. And Will Smith's like, don't be too fucking sure about that. Like, yeah. you know, anything can happen. The Alex Ray of the movie, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> you guys all like Justin Timberlake? He sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Love you, Ray. Hope you're listening. <laughs> anyway... Um, and that that's kind of how the movie goes. I mean, there was a lot of bad parts to iRobot. I mean, product placement, product placement, Shia LaBeouf. You know, <laughs> I think he's hilarious though. He he does good. He as shot. A comedic... She shot with her eyes closed. <laughs> I forgot he was in there. Stop <laughs> swearing. They do play off each other pretty well. I and mean, he's he's great in minor roles where he's just like the comedic. I mean, for what he what he, was he like twenty then? So I mean, that yeah, was but perfect. he looked like he was like sixteen. Yeah, he was yeah. perfect for the role at that point. Holes two point oh. Yeah, <laughs> Stanley <laughs> Elmatz two point oh. I can't even remember who the woman in that movie was. Oh, she's in a lot. She's in now that you say vampires. I think she's in Blade. Uh, Blade two. Blade two. Okay. I'm gonna double check that. You, you keep going. That. Um, I just like the the story for iRobot. I mean, he's his. From, you know, he almost dies in a car accident, and he kind of wished he had died, because like, it was either save his life or save the little girl's life. He wanted the little girl to get saved, and the robot saves him, and because of that, he doesn't trust the robots anymore, mm-hmm. and it kind of, like, gives backstory to his, like, gruff character of why he's such a dick to everyone. Mm-hmm. It's because, like, he has a right to be, and at that point, um... The fact that you can go through almost the entire movie, like up until I think maybe three fourths of the way through the movie, 
without even knowing that he's missing an arm. Mm. Like, that's when they finally figure out when the when the robot, like, tries to punch him and he catches it with his arm that you, he has his own robot arm. And it, God, I was way off. <laughs> <laughs> way off, who, man. Do you know who the actress is? Bridget or? Moynihan. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. She's from John Wick. What? She's on Blue Blood. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. was way yeah. off. Oh, I was way, way off. <laughs> I don't know why. I was seeing her and somehow putting her in there. That's fine. But I think that's great that how you play that because I actually think it's a twist in there that actually is um, is warranted because it's not him that's in the car accident. It's the the dad and the child that are. Yeah. And the robot thinks that he's in trouble, so the robot saves him instead of the little girl that's trapped inside. I thought they were. I thought they were. They were. In an accident together, and then... Well, because I think he gone. dives into the water to try to save her, and then the robot drives in after them and pulls him away. No, I'm pretty sure that's not how it worked, because I think he's yelling at the robot while he's underwater, which would... Because he's in a car by himself, and then the little girl and her dad are in another car. And he's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. telling him, go to, go to that car, save the little girl... And the robot's yeah, 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 like, yeah. you have a better chance of living. I'm oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's that, why he decides not. No, yeah, that, yeah, that is right, I think. Yeah. I'm going to go with it, yeah. Woo. My knowledge of, again, my useless knowledge of movies. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, that's, yeah, I, I, yeah, for some reason I thought he was, like, punching the glass or something, and then... No, yeah. That's a robot that's, that's punching the, robot. the glass. Yep. But, yeah, but I like how it's, it's twisted like that. Yeah. You know, but you can see that he's an old school guy just in the way, I mean, like, and then it goes back to the writing. The way that they describe the character in the script and how they put it on the screen, he's still wearing Chuck Taylors in this, you know, this advanced, um, yep. this future. And I think that's really great because it, it says so much for the character of Will Smith or Spoon, whatever the hell his name is. Yeah. Um, that he's sort of an old school guy and doesn't believe in what's going on, and yeah. in fact, at the end, he is not correct. It's not, it's not that the robots have gone nuts. It's the person that has taken over. Yep. I, I guess in a way it might be because it's it like was, that, it was a little bit of both. Yeah. Because I believe the the head guy at the at the company was the one who like commissioned it. But I do believe, like, the, uh, one of the AIs actually did, like, kind of evolve. The, like, yeah, like the HAL version. Yeah. The Vicky, yeah. I think it was yes. called. Yes, um, you say that, yes. Yeah, Vicky was the one that took over it to, yeah. to sort of destroy um, humanity. But, yeah, I, I think it was... And then sometimes it's in, like, your typical your typical Will Smith movie. Yeah. You know, or, you, you know, even, like, that, that one cop that sees it differently than the whole other precinct. For and... sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. There, there's definitely some, like, cliche oh, yeah. aspects, but I think, as a whole, it was a it was a really enjoyable movie. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, yeah, uh, you pretty much said it all. My f- personal favorite, I'll just add this bit, my personal favorite um, scene is that, uh, you know, that Will Smith is uh, underneath the water and the robot saves him because I think it was like a 5% chance he had a 5% greater chance of surviving Yeah. and just ignoring you know the five laws the first one is do no harm so he was ignoring all the other um, laws or you know yeah, command yeah. from a human um, because he was trying to do the least amount of harm or save the most right whatever. and then he Will Smith gave that speech about how like 5% was like not big enough a difference for him to not mm-hmm. save a girl that was uh, significantly younger than him. Yeah, so uh, I, I like that a, lit, a lot, and I think it's, as far as I remember, it's not, he's not like crazy, crazy funny in this movie. I think it's more Shiloh. No, he does. He definitely has like one-liners every once in a while, mm-hmm. but yeah, he definitely plays a more serious role. Yeah. So, yeah, and I enjoyed that quite a bit because he is this sort of gruff cop, and I like that whole, you know, no one believes the robot could have done it, and absolutely no one. He's yep. the only one, and he, he's the one that interrogates him, and that scene where uh, he said, I did not murder him, and slams his fist on the, the table, and you realize, like, or yeah. it kind of clicks the robot like he's showed anger. It. Yeah. yeah. Which it shouldn't do. It shouldn't yeah. have anger, but yeah, it was a fantastic movie. I, I had it on my top 10, just not that high, so. All right, my number four is The Pursuit of Happiness. Higher. Okay. It's all right, man. It's all right, <laughs> man. It's fine. I'm gonna, I was going to struggle to talk about it because I remember really, really enjoying the movie, but I don't remember a lot about it, to be honest. So I have to get on to my number eight, which is Ali. Wow, Damon. <laughs> you have thrown me a curve. <laughs> Do you have that significantly higher? No. Okay. <laughs> but 
Yeah, I've never Go seen this. Go for it. Okay. Never seen this. Oh, wow, um, man, I am puzzled. <laughs> because it's not higher, or no? Because I'm, I'm now, now. I'm now think I try to envision your guys' top five, yeah. but I, I honestly can't do it, it was. I swapped it out like almost last second for pursuit of happiness because it was it was considerably higher. But I was like, Ali, it's been a really long time. I remember really really enjoying the movie, and I I just really like. I like the the person that was Muhammad Ali, and like that was my like kind of my kind of guy. Like he was cocky, but also like he backed it up. Yeah, and that's that's always been my thing. Like that's why I liked Terrell Owens and and Chad Johnson for football. Like those guys who would talk shit, but then they would come out and they would put up the numbers. Right, like, that right. Was my, that was yeah. my thing. And I've always been a fan of the fact that uh, Ali stood up against. The government and didn't want to go to Vietnam just because of the draft, that kind of thing. I, and he didn't back down, like he didn't run away to Canada, like tons of other people did. He stood his ground and I was like, "You're gonna throw me in jail, throw me in jail," but I'm not going. And I, I've yeah. always been a huge fan of that. And, and see, the, I mean, just on a side note, I really don't know really how to react to that because AI didn't live in the time. You yeah. know what I mean? And I, it, I think it's, it's. I I don't think. I mean, we've. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be involved in any sort of drafts, but like, Hopefully not. It, it be it comes down to you know, um, you know your your own will, you know your human human will. What what are you going to do? It's my life. You can't tell me what I'm going to do. Yeah. And you know, in one way I respect it, in another way I kind of disrespect it because so many people did go when they were called up. So I mean, it, I think it's a little cowardice. Um, and I think nowadays if you had like, uh, say like a Des Bryant, you know, be called up, um, and him not going, I think you'd see a little bit different, um, reaction. Well, I think, I think people at the time had that uh, yeah. similar reaction. Like they probably were pretty pissed, but like people look back on it fondly cause it was like the draft was, was fucked up. Like, and he said no to it and he didn't, I mean, I, I think the thing that people like, like about it is that he said no and then stood his ground. Like he didn't. Right. He didn't run away. He was exactly. Like, yeah. Didn't you can you can come for me. That's fine. I'm not going. Right. Like, you can't make me. Which I think a lot of people like that. He he didn't, didn't pay his away. way out of it. Yeah, yeah. Which you know, tons of people did. Um, but the movie as itself. Now that we're done talking about the man. Um, <laughs> I, I, I yeah. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think Will Smith. This is probably one of his better, well, not better. I've always, I've always really enjoyed him as an as an actor as a whole, and I think when he can, he is really fantastic as a as a dramatic actor. And he, of course, Muhammad Ali was a funny guy, so he he played his funny parts in this movie. But I, and I think they, I don't know if they could find a better person to play Muhammad Ali for, he, in a movie. He did a good job transforming into the character, sure. into the role. I should, yes. I mean, not character, but the guy who yes. was Muhammad Ali. Just the way he would talk. I think that's the one thing that sticks out to me because I only watched it once. Yeah, and it was. It stuck with me since I watched it, and I rented it from a, a video store. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a while. Oh, for sure. And I think this is this movie kind of transformed Jamie Foxx's career. It kind of painted him in a yeah. more dramatic light. What was he, Don King? No, he was he was like he, one of his... Uh, Not Don King, what the hell am I smoking, yeah. dude? <laughs> yeah. he was, I think he was one of Sorry his managers or something, and then he like he had like some drug problems or alcohol That's problems what I meant, the manager. I don't know why I yeah. said Don King. I, mean, I saw King, the hair and just ran. Don King's <laughs> in the movie, <laughs> for very briefly. But I think capping the movie off with the the... Rumble and Man- oh, I forget what it's Thrill called. Thrill and Manila. Thrill and Manila. That's what it's called. I think it's perfect. Ali Bumaye. Yep, that's always been a line that has stuck with me for like since I watched it the first time. Was Ali Bumaye? It's great. I just I really liked that movie. I don't know what else to really say about uh, it. Uh, I think well, Michael Mann. I thought um, I, I, again one of the most if we did like underrated directors, I think he'd have to be on there. Wisconsin. Ooh. I think he went to Madison or whatever. But anyways, um, I thought, yeah, I thought he, I thought he did a great job. I think it's, um, it got a couple of nods in the Oscars. Obviously, Will Smith, and then I think John Voight for supporting. But I remember a lot of the things that were going on, sort of as like this, you know, a biopic before bio, you know, biopics yeah. were a thing. 
And again, we talked about um, what was the film that we talked about was oh Hancock being maybe before its time. Maybe Ali was a little bit before its time too, and people would react a little bit more. Um, I don't know. Favorably. Yeah, favorably for for a film that sure. has to, especially now since he's gone. So. I mean, I, I enjoyed the film. I can't remember exactly I mean, everything. I think I own it, but I'm yeah, not 100% sure. Yeah, it's definitely sure. been a long time since I've watched it. Yeah, but I mean, either way, I think it's it's definitely um, a movie that you got to go and watch, and especially for uh, um, for Will Smith's performance. So Yes. I'm glad it made the list, because I actually forgot to put it on there. <laughs> wow. All right, three. That would be you. I am legend. Okay. Nobody higher? Nope. Wow. I never saw it, so. I'm just going to specify. Oh, Atlanta. <laughs> I'm just going to specify it's not for the CG. The CG in this movie is absolutely horrible. Um, yeah. The CG deer, the CG lion, the CG creatures are all horrible. Yeah. Um, but I will say that it's a very underrated drama. And just like I went into Wild Wild West looking at it as sort of a satire of old Western TV shows. I went into this movie um, looking at it and coming out of it as a drama. Um, I think it's intense. Uh, I think it has a, a very decent director who this film is, this genre is sort of right up his alley for um, Francis Lawrence, who did Hunger Games. He did Constantine. So I think he did three Hunger, uh, three Hunger Games movies, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. But I think thinking or looking at it as sort of more of like an artistic view. Um, I think this shows the landscape of the New York City of an overgrown, decrepit sort of New York City yeah. very well because they use the depth of field so well. And the one that I think about the most is when they're going into the um, the museum and you have this very high angle shot and it's just a wide angle of the street lights, of the buildings. Um, and you you can still see because it's so well lit that you can see a, a very very like ant like Will Smith with his dog going into the museum because they decided to light um, the entrance of the museum so perfectly that he sticks out amongst all of this stuff that's going on. So everything in the left side of the frame is very dark, and you have this really nice lit um, steps or staircase to the museum. Um, nice and bright and white too so his black clothing really sticks out yeah. but it, 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 it's it's done phenomenally and I, I think it really does capture um, it, it captures a lot of emotion within it not just with his dog but um, the flashback scenes that I actually think uh, serve a very good purpose throughout the movie um, going back because it, it, it doesn't just lose track of what it's trying to say with the, with the flashbacks, it goes forward with the flashbacks. And you're always constantly reminded of the reasons for the flashback. I mean, yep. the guy is... Uh, Will Smith plays a character that's... Um, I think he's very uh, too far gone. You know, he he's a character that there's nothing that's going to redeem him or bring him back, which is why I like the actual theatrical version better than the alternate ending. Um which, if you've seen the film, I'm not going to spoil it for you. <laughs> if you've seen the film, you you know what it what happens in the theatrical, and you can obviously guess it's opposite in the the alternate version, duh. But um, yeah, I, I really do enjoy enjoy this film um, because of the relationship that he has with one of the creature, and that's the the dog, and then obviously the flashbacks because there's no other humans in the movie, so. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I really go back to this movie for the dramatic, um, uh, the drama and uh, the emotion that it packs. But again, don't go in there looking for, you know, top of the art CG because it's not going to happen, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I agree with most of what you said. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, I liked the alternate ending better. What? Cause I, I don't remember the endings now because I was just trying to look it up to even cover yours. I already know the ending. <laughs> you know the ending? Yeah. Uh, so, spoiler alert, if you don't want to hear, go check out Filmy Film Round 1 Match 2. Yeah. Then they come back. Um, he actually takes that uh, that nade, that grenade, yeah, that's right? That's the theatrical and, one. Yeah, and then, like, sacrifices himself 
Um, and then the other two humans in the movie ex- escape mm-hmm. to like this village or whatever. But that's what I mean about too far gone character. They don't sell out in the end. Um, I think the only re- the only way this guy is going to be happy is if is if he's gone, if he's not living anymore. Yeah. Because you see the butterfly in the glass as that, um, whatever the... F- the creature. Yeah, the creature, whatever, yeah. The vampire, um, whatever the fuck it was. Yeah, like, busts into, trying to bust into the glass, and you see the picture of the butterfly, which his daughter was often referencing during the flashbacks, and um, you see it with uh, the dog that's with him that the butterfly comes and like sits on her nose and everything. Yeah. So I, I think that's the only way that, that the, he can find, um, you know, solace in, I guess, in life or life after death. Mm. The same way almost as uh, Maximus in, in Gladiator. Okay. But, I mean, that's what I got out of it. Yeah. So I enjoyed that. I ending. definitely, I can definitely see how character-wise that, that fits better. I think story-wise the other ending fits better because... This, it's the same creature, like, you know, you can pick him out of a freaking crowd, the creature that they wanted you to focus on. Right, yeah. Like he's the, the, like, the... The head. Yeah, he's the... The head of all the other, whatever the hell. Um, it made more sense in the alternate ending for him to be coming after uh, Neville or whatever his name yeah, was. Yeah, Neville, yeah. Um, because Neville had taken his... His paramour, his his girlfriend or whatever. His mate, yeah. His yeah. matriarch. yeah. That made more sense story wise because otherwise it was just chasing him for the sake of chasing him. Like it didn't seem like there was a point to it. They made him. They made. Yeah, I know. I I see what you're saying now because you you kind of have, um, you have the O in the line of X's in both ways. Yes. Um, you have you have that. You you kind of lose sight of why that dominant male was coming after his yeah. female. Is because they still have some sort of human connection. Yeah, and that's what I think they were trying. What the right the alternate ending they were trying to. Focus I wish on. they yeah. If we if they would have meshed both of them, I think it would have been fine. Yeah. Um. But then again, how does he how does he die then? Right. Exactly. So, but in the alternate, he he escapes with the other two people, and then they find this which isn't this the, safe haven for yeah. humans. And it, I think it was just a cop out, but it, yeah. Well, I mean, she finds the safe haven for humans anyway, but. Whether he's there or not is really the the difference between those two endings. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just... Yeah, I think the movie focuses a lot... I, I, or when it, when it focuses on his, like, mental stability in the beginning, like, he's having conversations with mannequins that he has set up around, like, the city. That kind of... Like, he's trying to keep himself sane, but at the same point... It actually looks like he's starting to go a little insane because he's having conversations with mannequins. Like he's doing it because he wants to like keep some resemblance of normal life, but he's talking to mannequins. So there's like a little bit of like he might be going crazy doing this. Well, his hourglass is already running. Okay, so yeah. his only friend is the dog. Which I mean, let's be let's face it, dogs don't last a whole long time. No, and so his his hourglass is like I said already running down. With either she survives. As long as she can throughout her own life, yep. Or she perishes because of the outbreak, right? Um, but that scene where he falls into his own trap is, um, man, is that high intense? And oh, it, for sure. And and it's re- and then, like it's one of my favorite parts. It's he, the it's he the definitely most, starts to lose it a little bit there. Yeah, be, just... but do do you? Th- my brother is convinced that Fred, the mannequin, Fred moves when he drives by. He he says he moves. I don't think he does, but he no, says he I'm moves. I'm sure it was that it was the creature that moved it. Like that's what they were hinting at. Was that yeah the creature that had been stalked or stalks him throughout the entire movie is the one that moves the mannequin and kind of sets up the trap himself to catch Will Smith's character. But even going back now that I think about it, kind of backtracking a little bit, the the one that he catches the you know the the vampire thing that he catches. Has a tattoo of a butterfly. Yes. Where the hell does that come into play at the end? Like, I don't get where... You know what I mean? So, Mm -hmm. here we are again at this crossroads of, like... Maybe they should have brought two of these together. And maybe he should have saved... Maybe he should have, like, poured his own blood into this one... This one... Yeah. Creature, and then... 
mm. saves humanity somehow like that, but he still perishes in the in yes, the effort. Yes, yes, yes. Either then, way, yeah. With the alternate, and you do get like the the one guy making like the butterfly with his hand. Yeah. Saying that he wants his his girl back. Yeah, and but the, the, but it also t- yeah like the butterfly ties into his own f- yeah. his own life too, yeah. which is weird. But like I, I guess I really don't know what they were going time. for there, but. Um, yeah, that was three. I am legend. Yes. Number two. Oh, I think this is gonna give away quite a bit. Men in Black. Ooh, higher, higher. All right. <laughs> uh, What's that? You want me to dig deep? Okay. Ali, I robots gone. Men in Black three's gone. Let's go. Uh, Legend of Bagger Vance. Okay. Um, and the reason why I put this one on there is because I think it's like the game of golf. It's very soft-spoken, and it sort of takes you through the process of this film methodically. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into it too deeply because I'm not very familiar with the film. I've seen it bits and pieces here and then watched it fully through one time. Yeah. But I think I just... I really love uh, the Bagger Van character that Will Smith portrays, and I also like Matt Damon in the film. And I think um, the two of them playing off each other and then, you know, you have sort of um, that sort of white-black thing going on where, you know, like we see in a lot of movies, you know, it's a lot of sports movies really like to hone in on this idea of like, you know, two races coming together and people accepting this person and whatnot. But as you can tell, I'm not very well-versed in... The Legend of Bagger Vance, but I put it on there because I have seen it, and I think if you haven't seen it, if you enjoy golf films, and I'm not gonna lie, um, there are a few golf films that I enjoy. There's one with Shia LaBeouf. Uh, is that the greatest game ever played? I think, I so, think that's so. the one. It's a Disney one, I think. Yeah. Um, I think he's in that, which is a tolerable film. Um, I'm not a golf fan. I think golf is less than a sport than cheerleading. I think that. Uh, Boom! Wow. I think <laughs> I think that um, people who tell me that they go and you know play eighteen rounds of golf, well, big freaking deal. You might as well pick your toenails because you're not doing anything. Okay, so and the fact that they have um, women versus male beginning points to teeing off is absolutely ludicrous. Uh, and so come at me if you're a golf fan. Come at me. <laughs> we have a comment section. We want to hear from you. Golf, not a great sport. Uh, it's boring to watch. Um, oh, hell yeah. I don't think anyone could argue that. Um, it's, it, it's, it's ridiculous. So, anyways, it does, it gives a, it's a testament to golf in general. These, this, this film in general, and obviously the greatest game ever played. So, um, like I said, come at me. Uh, <laughs> golf isn't that great. So, why don't you go 18 holes and rent a golf cart? And tell me how much you've spent, in t- how much time you spent in the sun. So, because I know you've been to that drink cart like four times. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's Legend of Bagger Vance. Won't make it on our final list, I guarantee it. But that is my number two. All right, Royce. Uh, let's see here. This is funnier now that you said yeah. it was your number two. <laughs> number three, I had Independence Day. Wow. Oh, yeah. Higher? Oh my god, I gotta, wow. I'm gonna piss on your faces. Oh, wow. um, In a nice way. Then okay. I had, and this is a stretch, um, yeah, Bad Boys. Oof. Oh um, my lord, he's gotta look at it. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Pretty sure it's my three, so go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah. No, I don't have a whole Gosh. lot to say about the movie. It's been forever since I've seen it, but it's a fun action movie. It's pretty hilarious. Um, yeah, I don't... I had it on my list as one of the movies I've seen with Will Smith, um, but it's just very traditional Will Smith movie, um, buddy comedy with uh, I forget who. Martin Martin Lawrence Martin Lawrence, Martin Lawrence. Um, I haven't heard yeah. that name in a long, long time. He doesn't do a whole lot anymore. Like I said, not a whole lot to say. I think you know everyone has seen this movie. Everyone has experienced it. Um, there's not a lot of depth to it. Uh, James Cameron, all the glory. Nope, Michael Bay. Michael Bay. Or Michael Bay, yeah. Not James <laughs> I, I was thinking Michael Bay. I I've had James worse Cam- follow-ups. Yeah, <laughs> definitely <laughs> worse follow-ups. <laughs> You're all right. Um, but yeah, it was just, it's a fun Will Smith movie that um, if you like Will Smith, you will most definitely like this movie. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna jump in here too because it's also my number three. Um, 
I think this is one of the like maybe three Michael Bay movies I can I can stand watching. Um, the Rock. Yeah, I like The Rock. It's my favorite. I can do The Rock, movies. and I can do Armageddon. Okay. Like I'm not like a huge fan of Armageddon. I think it's like all hands on ridiculous, but. Yes. It did give us a great... Wild Wild last round. Yeah. <laughs> Just a bit. Um, but this movie, I think, is is buddy cop comedic gold. Like, just the the relationship between those two. Like, Martin Lawrence is kind of... They don't really say it, but he he's older. I mean, he's older than Will Smith is. Let's just mm. be honest right now. Um, and then Will Smith is, like, the new up-and-coming, like, the pretty boy. Whereas Martin Lawrence is, like, the the lockdown family guy. And they have, you know, the little back and forth here and there of, like, Will Smith just getting his dick in everywhere. And Martin Lawrence is, like, you know, committed relationship-wise. And playing off of that. And then when they, like, swap identities, like, at a certain point, like, where Martin Lawrence starts being Will Smith. And then Will Smith starts being Martin Lawrence. It's just, it just leads to just great comedic, I mean, say what you want about the action and story but I think the the comedy is really what shines in this movie what can we say about Michael Bay man he sells tickets dude that he does, does. He's he's absolutely like, insane how many <laughs> he does it somehow. haters wanna hate yeah he's make, he's rolling he, in dough dude more knows, money than all of us will ever see he knows it dude yeah oh yeah oh yeah, yeah he says he makes movies for 13 year old boys and that's what I think I mean, that's does. pretty much what Pain and Gain was so yeah uh two um, a two. Oh yeah, Suicide Squad. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, this is probably. Yeah, obviously it's my, one of my favorites. Uh, Will Smith, although, um, it, it doesn't follow traditional Will Smith. We talked quite a bit about it before at the start of the podcast about what Suicide Squad is. Um, he plays Deadshot. Um, in the film, it's it's definitely worth a look, even if you end up hating it. I think it's it's worth just watching because. You know, it's such a diversive film. Yeah. Uh, or divisive film. But, um, yeah, he plays Deadshot, which he he's a superhero that his power, he doesn't really have a power. He's like a mercenary that can handle any weapon, and he's known for not being able to miss any shots whatsoever. And he's being held in prison, and he gets essentially released to go on a suicide mission to save this city. Um, but, yeah, he has his moments, his traditional Will Smith moments of, uh, making jokes and cracking laughs, but he also has this nice little backstory as um, this father that's just trying to make a living for his daughter, whose daughter is living with mother, and mother's um, I think she's hopped up on drugs or otherwise um, indisposed yeah. and not really in good shape. And um, you know he gets caught by Batman. Batman catches him in a flashback, and um, he ends up you know Deadshot grabs a gun and is about to shoot him, and his daughter steps in the way and asks him not to do it. Um, and that's why he gets caught, not because, you know, Batman beat him necessarily, although I'm sure he would have, because it's freaking Batman. Um, yeah, he's kind of bulletproof. Yes. <laughs> More <or less>. Bulletproof. <laughs> so, um, uh, a scene that uh, catches me, I, I, I don't know, it has less to do with Will Smith, but, um, in the movie when they, they're seeing what Will Smith can do, because he doesn't really have a power, he's, you know, just a mercenary, yeah. and they want to test whether or not he can actually fire any gun, they leave him at a table full of weapons, um, there's a security guard or officer that has been giving him a hard time the whole time. He's sitting right next to him and Will Smith, you know, wants to figure out whether or not the guns are loaded. So he grabs a gun and puts the guy's head almost immediately. And then, um, a little while later shoots it into the air after he gets talked down. And then he ends up, you know, firing at these targets and hitting the exact same spot on all these individual targets, which is a headshot in all of them. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's... Uh, but I really thought it was a good movie. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, and Will Smith, I think, was very good casting for the character. I liked him quite a bit. So He's, in my opinion, the the almost only highlight for that movie for me was... Like, after I came out of that movie, I was like... I didn't like... I, like, I really didn't like it. But, man, I'm down for anything Will Smith is going to do now. Like, he... He reinvigorated me on his own career. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> the acting that he pulled off in that movie was, like, leagues ahead of everyone else in that in that film. Mm -hmm. And, like, probably the only fleshed-out story, other than maybe Harley Quinn, although they, they jumbled that up like yeah. fucking hell. Yeah. 
Definitely, um, it was Will Smith's movie first. I want to yeah. say. And he he did a fantastic job. He he was just killing it the mm-hmm. entire movie. Yeah. Probably the only nice thing I can say. I mean, it was. I mean, it's <laughs> obvious that like, you know, it's it's meant to be this superheroes or in this case super villains coming together. Um, it's obvious though that compared to Avengers, they give Will Smith the most screen time along with um. Yeah, Marvel yeah, Harley Quinn. Quinn. Yeah, Harley Quinn. Yeah, um, it, it's meant to be their movies, whereas you know Avengers, comparable is it it's was, pretty divvied up between the superheroes for the yeah, most part. Everyone's movie. Yeah, um, but that's fine because Will Smith, like Damon said, is the strongest actor am- among the bunch, and he had it was written for. It feels like it was written for Deadshot to be the main character, or at least it was edited to look like that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I just enjoyed the movie quite a bit. Nice. We already did your three, so did my two. Three. My number two is Independence Day. Wow. Yeah. Um, is that I, your two? No. Yeah. That, was, that wasn't your two. But, yeah. I think it was your three. Oh, yeah, yeah it was your three. Yeah. All right, let's oh, talk about it. All right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because I had to fill in. Yeah. Uh, Independence Day. Uh, I think, I mean, it's obviously iconic at this point in, in time. Um, I think only for that scene where they blow up the White House, but I'm a very oh, anti. Oh, for sure. I'm very anti this movie. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> uh, I think Will Smith does it. Uh, this movie and Bad Boys and Men in Black kind of all got Will Smith to where he is now, uh, making $20 million a film. Um, he was, Damn right. <laughs> he, was, he was on freaking fire. In Welcome the to Earth. <laughs> Just, like, him, he was, uh, I can't, I don't even know how to start this, like, he was fantastic comedy, comedy-wise, which, I mean, that's, his 90s movies were, were action comedies, all of them, almost, and this is fantastic, he's fantastic, I think, I mean, the story is, the story is the story, like, it's aliens invading, and, you know, Will Smith kills them all. Basically, I mean, whatever. It, it is what it is. It's not like the greatest movie of all time, but I think it's it's good for Will Smith. I think Will Smith was good in it. I think Jeff Goldblum was good in it. Probably the last movie he was ever Goldblum. really good in. No, Taylor Ruffalo Wheeler hates Jeff Goldblum. Really? Yes. Holy I I was I was arguing with him about the fly, and then <laughs> I went out and bought the fly and like shoved it in his face. <laughs> um. Yeah. Anyway, I don't. I don't really. I don't really know. Stephen, help me out here. Uh, Royce. Royce, help I mean, me out if here. I was thinking this, it's not as bad as. Uh, I didn't say his full Sisky. name. First Sisky. Thing says. Sisky says his first name. Royce bracket last name. <laughs> In the beginning, we told him. <laughs> it was really, oh man, it was just like everyone erupted in laughter. And I don't know if Sisky really knew what we were laughing at, so like he started laughing. and was like, hey, "How's everyone doing? <laughs> film, eat, film." Round one, match two, check it out. <laughs> Great battle. Great battle. Um, but yeah, I mean, Independence Day is... I mean, I, from what I was saying, that's like what shot Will Smith, like you said, to his career in movies. Yeah. I, I don't know if he did a movie before that or one he, that was successful. Bad Boys came up before that, but I don't okay. think Bad Boys had nearly the no. the popularity that Independence Day Well, it's getting did. a fourth. Just like... Uh, yeah. Well, they have to make a third one first. There is a third one in 2017. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what I mean. I'm sorry. And no, they do have, they they do have a fourth one. Fourth. I they saw that too when I was looking up. There, which is nuts. Because I must have been looking at yeah, it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, shoot, what was I was going to say. Like uh, Scott said, like it's just iconic for that the shot of the White House getting blown up and the size of the uh, the ship and the scope of it. But I mean, it, it's a ridiculous movie. It has, you know, it's ups and downs. But I mean, it's a generic action movie. You can't really, you can't really yeah. fault it much for not having much of a plot and not making sense at points. Um, but yeah, as a Will Smith movie, I think this is an important one just because of its significance for his career. For sure. And there's a lot of iconic lines from the movie. I mean, the, the speech, uh, Bill Paxton, Bill Pullman, Bill Pullman, sorry. Bill Pullman gives towards the end about, you know, this is our independence day. Well, it's kind of dumb, but it's also like something that sticks into your mind. Like when they were playing it during the trailers. For yeah, I was gonna say they use it in the trailers. The new, the new one, one, I was like, yeah, like I'm pumped again. Let's do this. And then that movie was absolute shit. Um, and then just like, 
obviously the welcome to Earth line you, you spat out earlier. Welcome to Earth. 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 <laughs> uh, just like the, the back and forth dialogue between Will Smith and and Jeff Goldblum later in the movie because they don't even see each other until like three fourths of the movie and you know they're the main two main characters. And then they just have like a great conversation. It's just comedic gold from there. I just I really like that movie. Mm-hmm. Obviously, again, it's it's ridiculous, but it's it is ridiculous. just a really fun movie to to watch. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, number ones. Holy Ooh. crap! We've come That's a long it. ways. We have. Uh, oh, the pursuit, pursuit of pursuit happiness, happiness is my number one. I was gonna say that was the one that yep. you mm-hmm. made me wait on. Um. Dude, I think it's uplifting. Uh, obviously, the chemistry between father and son, uh, yes. Will and Jaden, is yes. you can't you can't outdo that. I think they they played off each other so well. Dream big. I think it's a an interesting and engaging story, um, and heartbreaking at moments too. Yo, yeah, definitely, definitely, and um, you know, Gabriel Muccino, uh I, I don't think he's done much, but I think he did another one with Will Smith, and I'm blanking on what it is that he did with him. Seven Pounds? Yeah, I think so. Because they have very similar styles. So yeah. That's really um, and then Steve Conrad, the writer, he also wrote The Weatherman, which I think is another underrated movie. Uh, Knutson likes it. Yeah, Knutson, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I just um, want to see that. Look Oscar cool. nominee for acting. Uh, for Will Smith, but I, I just want to point out something. I really love the narration um, because the narration sort of brings home the tone of the sections of each film or each part of the film. So, you know, this is the part um, I call running or something like that. He's got to run to catch these machines that he was trying to sell to these doctors, these bone density scanners or whatnot. Um, or it's, you know, this is the part where I don't have money. I'm, I'm just, I'm blanking on what else he says. But, mm-hmm. you know, he, he labels the, the, the parts of the film like Tarantino would label his portions of film. Except for he does it with narration, or they do it with narration instead of um, an actual cue card. Yeah. You know, like a cue card saying, this is this point of the, you know. Um, so I actually like that. And actually, Damon, I was going to ask you, because I was thinking about this all day and I can't point it out. You said you didn't like narration that much. I don't. I don't like, uh, overuse of, like, voiceovers and narration. What movie were we talking about where... Oh, gosh. Um, and I labeled it down... I, I narrowed it down to two. Okay. I think it was either Barry Lyndon... I haven't seen Barry Lyndon, so it definitely wasn't Barry Lyndon. So then it must... It might have been, um... When I was bitching about about time, when they use that narration to basically tell you what's going on, when it's just yeah. so right in your face. Yeah, and that I, I know that's that's there too. There was another movie that I really just it takes mm. me out of the movie. The Wolf of Wall Street. The Wolf of Wall that's Street. That's what it was. It was yeah, because it it doesn't have it the entire movie. It just like throws it in there at random points, and it bothers the shit out of me. I think it, I think it goes to like that sort of uh, you know chaotic style that they're yeah. going for. I mean, no, Wolf of Wall Street. Of but course. I have another one that I uh, I started watching. Oh fuck! What was that movie? Stranger Than Fiction. No, um, <laughs> it was Adam Sandler. It was. Uh, it was terrible. Because it was Adam Sandler. Yeah. Oh, uh, God. I don't remember what it was called now, but... Was it the Netflix one? No, it was one he did. It was supposed to be, like, a serious role for him. And it starts out with him trying to look up porn, and then I Punch just... Punch Love. Turned off... No, it wasn't Punch Love. No. I'm gonna look it up, but we'll continue talking. Um, about it. yeah, but I, I think the... Per, yeah, Pursuit of Happiness is great, and I love that speech that he gives to his kid. He gets the kid a basket, like, the, the only thing he can afford is getting his kid a basketball for his birthday... And that, like, he's going to go pro, you know, when they're playing on that that basketball court that is just drenched, uh, you know, after, after a hard rain. And, you know, he's just, he just straight up tells the kid, like, don't get your hopes up, pal. Like, I've never been one for athletics, meaning, like, you got my genes. Unfortunately, you're not going to be a pro basketball player. Mm-hmm. What is it? Men, women, and children. Never heard of it. Yeah, never it heard was... Of it. I think it was it was done by the same guy who did Juno, the Reitman, Jason Reitman. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. I know how to lift bags, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, like, I started watching it because I was like, it seemed like a really interesting movie, and they did some cool things from the trailer that I saw. 
Uh, but it starts out with him looking up porn, which I'm like, whatever. But it's narrated by Emma Thompson, like like a like almost like a Disney sounding voice, and it's narrating about porn. And I was just like, nope, I can't do it. Like <laughs> I fucking hate narration already. <laughs> and you're having like this like sweet voice talk about porn. Like I'm done. Out. Couldn't even stand it. But I mean, like I guess that that point in the film where he's telling his you know his kid not that you, you're not gonna be a basketball player or whatever, but then he goes into that speech about yes. you got a dream. Don't, let, go it, don't after let anyone it. tell you you can't do it, something. Because it, it fits so perfectly in his in his life, and he was being so down on himself that he actually, you know, radiated that, you know, sort of the like, criticism that he's getting for doing what he wants to do, an unpaid internship, yep. and goes out there. And, but, like, even the end when, you know, he comes in with uh, clothing that he's been painting in, you know, I have no better term for it, so don't hate me, but, like, a wife beater and that really small jacket, yep. like, you know, he's getting, I mean, spoiler alert, he gets the freaking job, so, yeah. but it just, just the way that he's just thrown through the ringer throughout the movie, it, it's so entertaining, it's uplifting, it's, uh, you know, it really does get um, depressing at times, but, like, you can just go back to that movie and just enjoy the hell out of yeah. it. I watched that in theaters with my dad, and that was an emotional ride, man. <laughs> it, yeah, dude, it's it's a it's a great film, man. And that's why it's and it also it's rewatchable. I think I, I'll yes. give it that. I think I go to it more off more to than any of the other Will Smith movies, and that's I think what pushed it to number one. Okay. All right, my number one. I think it's the same as yours, yours Damon. Men in yes. Black. That's Men my in Black. Me too. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this is by far my favorite Will Smith movie. Um. I think it's like a perfect blend of everything I enjoy with Will Smith. Um, he plays the cocky, like, street smart uh, police officer. O- movie opens with him chasing down. Dude, that whatever. orange suit he's wearing, yeah. whatever the hell that is. Like, so uh, classic 90s, dude. Oh, God, sure. yeah. Oh, man. All he needed was, like, one of those Kanga, like, yeah. weird hats to go on top. But, <laughs> sorry, I just had to say that. Um, but yeah, chasing down the alien and you know keeping up with it and just the I freaking love the beginning where he's taking the exam. Oh and, God, and yes, yes. One of the he grabs the table. Yeah, and, dude. <laughs> like want to get, wanna get and, in on this? <laughs> everyone else is yeah. the paper on their hands and like punching holes. Dude, in. He's I don't know how I don't know how many table. times I've creamed over that beginning <laughs> with Damon, but it's been so many times. <laughs> like. I hesitated. <laughs> Remember that when he says that after the gun, the gun range thing? Yep. What happened? What happened? Hesitated. <laughs> <laughs> I like the gun range too because like he goes through like why, why did shoot? you yeah. decide to shoot <laughs> little Susie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. And then his, his completely reasonable reason yeah, why. Yeah, it's so like, hilarious. Like, that one's up there, shit, he's working out. He's yeah. got a point. <laughs> he's just working out. She's walking around. That one's just like, blowing his nose. <laughs> He's uh, walking around with a quantum physics book. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it plays really well with, uh, or Will Smith plays really well with Tommy Lee Jones. They have a fantastic uh, rapport with each other. Um, and also, like, that ending bit. Uh, there's a couple of parts where Tommy Lee Jones says something really uh, poignant. Uh, I remember when he says, you know, a person is smart, people are stupid, dumb, irrational, they'll, you know, jump a thing. That was really cool. Um, Obviously not written by Tommy Lee Jones, but really cool parts of the movie. And then the very end where, you know, uh, Will Smith's character, Jay, says, um, I'm your partner. And he says, no, I'm, I'm training a partner. Or I told you I haven't been training a partner. I've been training a replacement. And, like, he realized that he's going to go off and um, he's not going to be a part of MIB anymore. He's going to get his memory erased. Right. And he'll, he'll be happier for it or you assume so yeah. until... Not until the second one. Until the second one. Skip the second one. Yeah, for the God's sake. Go, um, go, go see Josh Brolin in the third. Ruined everything the first one did, but um, but yeah, it was just a fantastic movie. Not to mention the villain um, played by... Vincent Captain, D'Onofrio. Yes, who's fantastic. Wrong, wrong trip. I'll need a snack. <laughs> just playing the Kingpin before. Yep. Oh, God, Yeah. Same voice, and it bothers me every time. It does. It is kind of weird, yeah, that he... But, yeah, that... Like, it's not... Like, I think it's a great um, adventure film as well. Yeah. Almost sort of like a... There's mis- you know, this mystery when you see that big tall guy's hat. It's the big tall guy, right? Yeah. 
Or is it the old man that had his head opens? No, it's the big dude. No. Shh. No, it is. It's the small guy who gets his head, who opens his head, and it's a, it's an alien inside. So and it's the, the other, old guy. But the tall guy is an alien himself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So like, and then he's like, it's on Orion's belt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, what does that mean? And you don't even realize that Orion is the the cat. The cat. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Great part. Yeah. It's so good. And and I think that yeah, it's just. But it's hilarious, man. Every time I think about that movie, I think about the opening, the yes. opening stuff yeah. where he's just he's getting in all kinds of trouble with that. Yeah, it, um, it's just scraping that table over. Yeah, it's hilarious. When they're sitting in those weird stools. Yeah, like no one's comfortable. Everyone's just there's just so many great parts when he's helping that uh, that one lady give birth. Oh he's, yeah, he's yeah. just getting like flown around in yeah. the air. Like oh god, it's so good. Yeah, that's great. The the midget cricket. Yeah. When he gets a noisy cricket. Yeah. yeah. Noisy cricket. Tony Shalhoub, right? Yep. Yeah. Tony Shalhoub getting his head blown off. I was at Damon's house one night, and he's like, "Dude, I think that's uh, Tony Shalhoub." I was like, "No way! No (laughs) way! Monk is in that movie." (laughs) Looked it up, and sure as hell he is. Yeah. Dude, who just regrows heads. But uh, all right, should we make this list? Let's do it. I think it's pretty easy. Obviously, number one is obviously number one. Yeah. Man in black. Yep. Oh, shoot. Uh, let me see here. Man in black. Then, uh... What, what, the, what the hell? Pursuit of Happiness? Yeah. Where was that for you? Uh, my four. I think... Not that I, I want to push anything. You, you doing good over there? Yeah, it, it just went all ape shit on me. Okay. Uh, I think Independence Day goes number two, since it was my two and your three. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right, Independence Day. Pursuit of Happiness, then? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. God, by the way, Wes, you got a pretty top five. (laughs) Although it probably shouldn't. No. It's outside of my top ten. (laughs) Like... (laughs) Such a great movie, though. I, I, it's been so long since I've seen it. I can't. Oh, someone Facebooked it. What are we looking at? Four here? Yep. Um, what was your four? Where, where? Men in Black 3 is my four. Wild Wild West is my five. I Am Legend is my three. What about I Am Legend? Where was it? Five? Yeah, I think I Am Legend is next. All right. And then, unless I'm mistaken, Wild Wild West will be five because it's my six. It could be Hancock, too, because that's my six and your five. That's right. Need to flip a coin on that one. Well, let's just do Hancock. Yeah, I think I feel better. <laughs> that's a little better. Wild Wild West at six. Mm-hmm. Jeez, I can't believe Legend of Bigger Man is going to make this. <laughs> um, what do you guys got left? I have Men in Black 3 at four. That's the only thing I have left. I robot. Um, oh, I Robot. Yeah, I think that should be nice. Pitch and Bad Boys. Yeah, oh, and Suicide Squad. Squad. That's pretty high, too. Yeah. Oh, where was Hitch? Hitch was his four? Oh, we gotta put Hitch. Jig. Hitch goes... Well, I always put the numbers on, and then I change my mind. Like, <laughs> right before, but I don't change the Hitch at... Thing. Well, we could. We have to put Hitch on there, so yeah. Hitch is at eight. Definitely worth so it. So we have two, nine, and ten left. What are we thinking here? Did you put I Robot on yet? I robots at seven, hitch okay. at eight. Okay. I have bad boys and Ali left. Ali was also on my honorables. Mm-hmm. And bad boys was on his. Bad yeah, boys bad and bad then boys Ali. Got up. Yeah, yeah, I got pushed up quite a bit. Trazer. All right, not in our top ten shows. Top ten best Will Smith movies. At number ten. Ali. Woo! At number nine, Bad Boys. At number eight, Hitch. At number seven, iRobot. Number six is Wild Wild West. Mm -hmm. And number five is Hancock. All right. Number four is I Am Legend. Number three, Pursuit of Happiness. And number two is Independence Day. And number one Will Smith movie is... Men 
in black. Men in black. Men in black. He come make me black. Men in black. Uh, Thank you guys for joining us. Like, subscribe, comment, subscribe, comment, subscribe, comment. Hey, you like golf? Comment. You dislike golf? Comment. Uh, if you haven't seen Filmy Films Tournament, check it out. Um, myself versus Aiden Toyton Sourlick. And uh, match two, Royce Brackett versus uh, Colin Big Nasty Wells. Um, we got uh, episode three coming up soon. And number four is going to be a shocker that we're going to put out very, very soon. An announcement we have to make. Yeah. Uh, stay in your seats when an I say announcement. that. Um, what could it be? Like I said before, man. Like our page. Subscribe, please. We're at 56. We're doing so well. I'm hoping to hit a hundy before the end of this year. So please help us out in that cause. Please help us out in that cause. Tell people about us. Preach. Um, we are still... One of the best kept secrets on YouTube. Check us out. Listen to us. You don't like us? Comment. Tell us what we suck at. Uh, but anyways, that is all for us. And remember, I'm the master of the mechanical stuff. As for my Wild West. <laughs>